Hello, my name is Corey McGee and I'm an occupational therapist and an assistant professor in the program in occupational therapy at the University of Minnesota in the United States. And I'm presenting today on concurrent validity and precision of the thumb disability examination in persons with thumb carpal metacarpal osteoarthritis. And I'm presenting today on behalf of my PhD and Masters of Occupational Therapy students, Leah Johnson, Madison Anderson, Sonia Hess, Ryan Carew, and uh, Maddie Schlossmacher. Some background related to this study. Thumb carpal metacarpal osteoarthritis affects 15% of adults over the age of 30 and 66% of women over the age of 55. Uh, those with this condition oftentimes experience activity limitations and symptomology such as pain um, and weakness. The thumb disability exam is a patient reported outcome that was created to evaluate disability and symptomology in this population. However, its test retest reliability has not yet been established and the scale has not yet been compared to a commonly used patient reported outcome in this population the brief Michigan hand questionnaire um, to evaluate its concurrent validity. The purposes of this study were to assess the concurrent validity between the TDX and the brief Michigan hand questionnaire and to determine the test retest reliability and precision of the TDX in persons with thumb CMC osteoarthritis. Our hypotheses were that the TDX would have strong concurrent validity with the brief Michigan hand questionnaire and excellent test retest reliability and precision um, when measuring outcomes in persons with thumb CMC osteoarthritis. In terms of methodology, this was a descriptive psychometric study of test retest reliability, precision, and concurrent validity. Those included in the study were those with a medical diagnosis of thumb CMC osteoarthritis or a positive pressure shear test the most sensitive and specific test for thumb CMC osteoarthritis. Those who were excluded um, were those with other upper extremity comorbidities um, and um, those who were currently receiving therapy or um, medical interventions for thumb CMC osteoarthritis. On this slide, we present the thumb disability examination. Uh, this is a 20 question survey, which is divided into three sections. The first section contains 11 questions, and the first seven of these questions deal with one-handed activities and the impact of the condition on these. Uh, the latter four of these questions are related to um, bilateral activities. The second section deals with the topic of symptomology, um, pain in particular, um, and is composed of five questions. And the last section um, deals with satisfaction related to the affected thumb, and it is comprised of four questions. All questions contain a, a one through five response scale with one indicating the most function, least pain, or greatest satisfaction. The total scoring is done on a zero to 100 scale with zero indicating the least amount of disability and 100 indicating the most. Participants were recruited from orthopedic clinics and through word of mouth. They either had an MD confirmed diagnosis of CMC osteoarthritis or a positive pressure shear test. Participants were instructed in using the, the TDX and the brief Michigan hand questionnaire and then went on to self-administer them. Um, after their first visit, they returned between seven and 21 days later to, re to retake the TDX assessment. Statistical analyses were run to determine concurrent validity between the, the, the brief Michigan hand questionnaire and the TDX, and test retest reliability and precision was determined through comparison of the two TDX trials. In terms of statistical analyses, descriptive statistics were run to describe uh, TDX and brief Michigan hand questionnaire values and to describe the sample demographics. Inferential statistics, specifically the Spearman's row test, was used to describe concurrent validity between the brief Michigan hand questionnaire and the TDX. And the intraclass correlation coefficient type 3, 2 
was used to determine test-retest reliability of the uh, TDX. Over a two-month period of time, 16 participants were enrolled in the study. There were a total of four males and 12 females with an average age of 64.8 years. There were trends in racial background, educational status, and area of residence, with most participants being white with graduate-level education and living in the Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area. 81% of the participants were right-hand dominant, with 50% of the participants having pain in both thumbs, 31.8 having pain only in their right, and 18.8 having pain only in their left thumb. As is illustrated by the figure on the right, the mean scores of all participants were calculated for the brief Michigan Hand Questionnaire and the first and second administrations of the TDX. As illustrated by this figure, there is an inverse relationship between the mean scores of the BMHQ and the two mean scores of the TDX, Trials 1 and Trial 2. This is due to the fact that the higher score on the TDX indicates poor thumb function, high pain, and poor satisfaction, whereas higher scores on the BMHQ indicate higher thumb functioning, lower pain, and higher thumb satisfaction. The mean score of the BMHQ for all participants was 72.01 with a standard deviation of 11.95. And the mean score of the first trial of the TDX was 31.95 with a standard de deviation of 14.13. And uh, for the second trial was 30.16 with a standard deviation of 13.72. The strength of the association between the total TDX score and the total BMHQ score was evaluated through use of the Spearman's row correlation coefficient. The scatter plot here illustrated on this slide illustrates the strength of this correlation or this association between these two total scores. And uh, the findings support that there is a strong negative relationship between the two as illustrated by the negative 0.733 correlation coefficient. Earlier research has investigated the test-retest reliability of the total and subscale scores for this tool and these were reported to be excellent in nature. However, they did not explore the precision of the scale. We sought out to explore the precision of the scale as well as uh, to see if we could reproduce the findings of the test-retest reliability reported by this earlier study. Um, as you can tell by this table, we also found excellent test-retest reliability um, and were able to calculate uh, from this analysis the standard error of the measurement or the SEM, as well as the minimal detectable change of the, of the measure, um, or the MDC. The standard error of the measurement for the total score, function, pain, and satisfaction subscores were 6.02, 2.9, 1.51, 1 .1, and 1.23, respectively. The MDC percent for total score, function, pain, and satisfaction subscores were 16.69, 8.04, 4.19, 4 and 3.42, respectively. Our findings support our hypotheses. There was a strong negative association between the total TDX score and the total Brief Michigan Hand Questionnaire score, as demonstrated by the Spearman Rose correlation coefficient value of negative 0.733. Additionally, the ICC values for the TDX total score as well as all three subtest scores were greater than 0.75 indicating excellent reliability, which is consistent with earlier research. The standard error of the measurement values for the TDX total score and the subtest scores indicate good precision and the MDC percent values for the TDX um, are acceptable given that the MDC percent of 30 or less is deemed acceptable. 
we were limited by a small sample size. We were also limited by the fact that not all individuals had a medical diagnosis of thumb CMC arthritis. Um, however, um, of those that did not, all possessed a positive pressure shear test. Um, and while this test is highly sensitive and highly specific, um, we did not have medical diagnoses for these clients. Future research should include a continuation of the study to expand its sample size. Additionally, the TDX should be tested against other scales of upper extremity function uh, to establish its concurrent validity with them. Um, moreover, uh, the scale might be used um, in other clinical populations where the thumb is affected. Additionally, um, if this line of study is continued, it should be tested in a more di demographically diverse population. In conclusion, we recommend that therapists and surgeons alike consider using the TDX outcome measure when assessing thumb function, pain, and satisfaction in persons with thumb CMC osteoarthritis. We present early evidence to suggest the strong psychometrics of this tool. In addition, we present new evidence to enhance confidence that when change occurs um, across time, that it's not due to measurement error. These are a few of our references, and we thank you for your time and for your attention, and wish you well.